Hey, Creative Weirdos. So today we're going to talk about the production. And in future videos, I'm going to do a live Q&A and talk about the things that I probably did not get into this video or previous videos to help you understand how to make a short film. So let's dive into it. This film took four days to make. And it was a very <laughs> dense four days to shoot this film. I was using a Sony A7 III. If you guys are familiar with that camera, it's a very prosumer camera. It's pretty cheap nowadays, I think around a grand and something still for the body alone. For me, I had three lenses. It was an 85, a 16 mil, but that 16 mil was um, a cropped sensor lens, which when I put it on the full frame body was roughly like a 24. And then I had a 58. Uh, so let's go back. This was a 1.8. This was a beautiful 1.4. This was a crazier uh, 1.2, you know, f-stop. And these shots were, I'll show you which shots those were. Those were Isaac at the computer or Alex on the, in front of the computer around, it was around here. When he's sitting here in front of the computer, it shows his face. These shots were all shot with the 58, and this was a Canon with um, a beautiful adapter. All manual focus, I love manual focus, all prime lenses, I don't like zoom lenses. The only time I would get a zoom lens would be for those beautiful Kubrick-esque push-ins. And it would be, if you know the difference, it would be, I'm gonna go off tangent, it would be, uh, I think it's called parofocal. And that is continuous focus for the price, honestly, for the price you need to get a manual, uh, non-native lens that is parofocus, which is use, as you're zooming, it keeps the focus. And if you know Kubrick films like The Shining, Barry Lyndon, a lot of Barry Lyndon, all these Kubrick films, he does a slow push in and it keeps its focus. And if you buy a modern day lens of that, it will cost you thousands upon thousands of dollars, but you can get cheaper versions that are, and it's hard to find powerful lenses because it's, it's an amazing, amazing, you know, gear. But the 58 was shot all on these like close-ups by the computer. And the 16 mil, as you'll see, most of the 16 mil shots, if I'm going through this, were stuff like, this was all 16. This is a mix of 16 and, yeah. So you can see how close it is, it's, it's, it's 16. But beautiful, this was like a beautiful lens. All manual focus, it's me behind the camera, I'm shooting. I have one hand, sometimes I put on autofocus to keep it on lock. And that's if I can put down the boom mic, because I, I had a boom mic as well. And even like everything's handheld, movements, everything. And it was an amazing honesty for what it was. These shots now, these shots, as I said before in the previous video, it was on the bike. And it was, here's the handlebars, it was attached to the bottom here, and it was like a Samsung, Samsung S21, yeah, pointed at Isaac as he's riding. Bad drawing, but still, not on the actual shooting. So these were, this was the gear plus a mic and a reflector, a good, beautiful, giant reflector that was also doubles as a flag. If you get one of those, they're amazing. And they're pretty cheap nowadays. You can get them used. Literally, that was the gear I had. Obviously, tripod. And 
That was it. No other, no other crew, nothing. And for me, once I, once I set up the rig on Isaac's bike, it was, once I saw the angle, I'm like, dude, just, this is what you need to do. Giving him directions as a director. This is what you need to do. I want you to do this. Go ride. I'll be here at this location. I'll meet you back and we'll go around these streets because I know the city uh, not as well as him, but enough so that I'm like, these are the beautiful streets. This, 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 this. And I will tell him, go ride here and come back. Call me when you're wherever you are. And I just let him go. And if this was a bigger production, if I had a lot more money, obviously this would be on, there's a term for it. It would be this car dragging you know, Isaac would be here on the bike and it, the cameras would be focused on him here. You know, it would be one of those. But in this case, I could not do that, obviously, budgetary wise and everything like that. So shooting everything was planned in my mind. I did not storyboard because I visually, the way I am is I visually see everything in my head. I know it when I see it. I, the whole film majority of it was shot in his his own apartment and i've been in that place for years for over a decade so i knew it inside and out so i knew this would be here this would be there this angle this angle but i still maneuvered and tried different angles each day was different but i knew what i was doing but as i went along a lot of things were cut out either they didn't fit or the acting or delivery did not fit whatever reason it molded and morphed as long as i can keep the core coming back to everything in terms of plotting and and concept to script and everything like that as long as i kept the theme and the overall goal you know of what he's doing it i can i can just stick to that world what would he do what would he say how would he act and with the budget and the time frame, because the script was written in four days, the whole most of the production was four days. Yeah. And as I was editing each day, once I got home that night, I would go to, you know what? I'll say that for our next video. Um, but let's continue breaking this down if we can. So most of the film, like I said, four days, like this shot was over and over we did two lenses this lens you can see it's a 24 or slash 16 mil and cutting between two different scenes because there's no here's another thing in when you're shooting public you need a permit in certain locations most locations but in this case luckily most of the shooting was done in his apartment so that was there was no permit it was his place you could do whatever you want and there's only one shot which was this one and that was a public shot. But since this is not a commercial film, there's, there's, you can bend certain rules and everything like that. Just remember, do whatever you can. Just don't break. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. But knowing your locations, knowing what you're going to do ahead of time, planning, script, you name it. So this was written, this scene was written in, everything was the way it was. But the day of, the actual shooting, everything from telling the uh, actor Dave to dress in a certain way or what kind of clothing do you have, et cetera, et cetera. Keeping continuity, that's a whole other thing too. Continuity is huge. Making sure Isaac was wearing that jacket in this part of the film, you know, the transition from his normal job to his new job and the nighttime shots and everything. I needed him to stay consistent. So the good thing is I'm a very visual person. I, I made sure he had the same things over and over while wearing all these hats, as you might do if you're doing literally a zero, or as in this case, it's considered a micro budget film. You have to keep continuity. That's a huge thing, or it takes people out of, out of the whole process. Yeah. So even things like if I can go back and find it, things like the computer and everything like that, that's a fake YouTube um, video. That's actually a video that Isaac shot of a previous race. And I made a fake account and everything like that for this purpose. Everything was like I did <laughs> all of this 
either the night of, the week before, or the week of, before the actual shoot day, I made all these like digital props and digital things either on his phone, on his computer, on his TV. And you need to do all these things. And luckily I have a background in doing all of these things that I would, I already knew how to do concept to finish product, whether it was a physical product for graphic design or fashion product to either shooting the ad, shooting all these aspects to like, I had that background. Not everyone's going to have that background and that's okay, but that's when you surround yourself with the right people. For me, I knew what I can do with what I have. The real challenging factors was essentially the unknowns, what will happen the day of. I know we have this day, but it could rain I uh, because it's April and in Toronto. So you always have to you know, stay fluid as I draw these lines, stay fluid in what you're doing and go with the flow, stick to your goal. Things will change. Things will come out of nowhere, especially if you have no money to even keep, even say the actors, something happens. You, the, usually, you know, if you have the budget, the actors, you know, you have more control over the actor because you're in a contract. In this case, you also have to get um an actor's release which is a must and i've done that i got everybody to get an actor's release so they allow you to use their likeness everything like that obviously through trust and everything like that but it's still a legal thing because if you're going to submit to festivals and all those aspects you need that as well so make sure you're in total communication with everybody and telling everybody what you're doing and what you're trying to do so everybody's on the same page but there'll always be unknowns that happen and there were a few unknowns and reshoots on other days like the washroom scene is actually two days because the first time um like this washroom right here when he's flexing and doing all these things the flexing day that was one day and then the actual flexing was a total different thing this was a different day and trying to get him to just relax and do more vanity aspects you know for the character and their self-image and all those other aspects you, some people need either a couple of hours to get prepped some people need you to describe things or act them out with them etc etc so this was the second day all of these shots right now compared to the long shot and these close-ups were all clearly all on the 16 slash 24 and the long shots in the previous shot which was if i could go back that was the 85 1.8 and this shot was also the same day as go back that shot that's the same day i I just kept the camera where it was we did the first scene then i'm like okay coming back if we go back to the script if we go back to the outline of the script actually these were shot and numbered see there when you look at the numbering that's the reason for the numbering because you sometimes have the right lighting and it helps you stay on time and in this case i guess in budget all these other aspects so this is the shooting script coming back to this so you would have 12b you know 14a and then you have 2a even though this is down the line in the actual pages it's shot more earlier so the number sequence is what i'm going to shoot first and group first so you can see apartment hallway day peering from across the other side of the scene this was all shot and then even though even though some scenes were other days of the story the actual story timeline you need a group sh- you need to group uh, shots together and you need to do this before you even shoot this is a must there's the script that you read online from a film but then the shooting the actual shooting script is a slightly different script it's numbered it's grouped it's color coded it's edited all these aspects just so people can see it in the sequence it's supposed to be shot not in the sequence it's supposed to be read but the sequence it's supposed to be shot so this is this is what helped me stay on task because i did not have a script supervisor which you would always have to help you with continuity and all those other aspects and keeping people on time same thing with uh, assistant director you would have that on set i was everyone and everything so if you want to make a short film these are the things you need to do 
and always remember not to burn out your actors. That's another aspect. And stay cool and calm because if you don't, you're just going to burn out yourself. And luckily I'm good at keeping myself chill and calm and wearing multiple hats and multitasking and also keep like all those. So in the next video, we're going to talk about post-production and what I did there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification. Also check out our website for free educational downloads. If you're looking for more story tools, check out our new story planner notebook, a guided story structure composite notebook that gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to plot your upcoming story. Now available on our website as an ebook and soon a physical book on Amazon and other platforms. And if you're interested, we offer creative consulting, and more information, check out the website in the description below. Till next time, weirdos, peace out.